This video is sponsored by Honkai Star Rail. From Hoyoverse, the creators of Genshin Impact, comes Honkai Star Rail, a free-to-play cross-platform space adventure fantasy RPG. In this game, you take the role of a trailblazer, exploring different worlds across the universe, searching for treasure chests, solving puzzles, exploring each NPC's story, and uncovering the secrets of the world. Available to play in data sync on PC, mobile, and recently released on PS5, Honkai Star Rail is launching its version 1.6 update, with all new characters, new maps, and new events. In this update, you'll need to help the new 5-star character Ruan Mei to solve an issue at the space station, which features an all-new map, Seclusion Zone. Players can also try out Shui Yi, a four-star quantum-type character following the Path of Destruction, who can deplete enemy toughness. Not just that, but the Stellaron Hunters Blade and Kafka make a return here as well. There will also be more updates to the simulated universe, ushering in new occurrences and curios for trailblazers to discover. And if you log in for seven days, you can get 10 free Star Rail Special Passes, which you can use to draw the new limited five-star heroes Ron May or Dr. Ratio. A beautiful and elegant biologist, Ruan Mei is a mysterious ice-type character following the path of harmony. Donning her Qi Pao, she's capable of increasing speed and break efficiency for allies. On the other hand, we have Dr. Ratio, yes that is his name. Viewed as a genius the world over, this imaginary type Adonis has an eccentric temperament, choosing to follow the path of the hunt, possessing powerful follow-up attacks, and will gain various powerful buffs based on the debuffs inflicted on enemies. Players can download Honkai Star Rail by using the link in the description to experience these new characters and use the redemption codes on screen to redeem 50 Stellar Jade. Just remember that this is a limited time event. And if you log into Honkai Star Rail on January 17th, 2024, you can receive a free copy of Dr. Ratio. This will be the first time they've ever given out a limited 5-star character, so be sure to claim this present. So whether you're on PC, mobile, or PS5, be sure to download Honkai Star Rail today and experience the new version 1.6, its new maps, events, and limited time characters. Thank you again to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. Okay, on with the show. We know that Fazbear Entertainment has developed something of a bad reputation over the last few decades, and while it's true that some stories associated with our name were loosely based on actual events, the majority of them were total fabrications from the mind of a complete lunatic. Lawsuits pending. Well, I mean, you can't just say that some of the things were based on true events, but most of them weren't, and not expect us to ask questions. The fact that any of the things in the series might have been based on factual events is terrifying. But we aren't above laughing at ourselves. Ha ha ha. That's why we have recreated many of these completely fictitious scenarios, lies, that you've been fed over the last several years into a hilarious VR game, in the hopes that we can finally move past these childish ghost stories and develop a new relationship with you, as well as your kids. Wait, how the hell is that going to make us move past the allegations or make us believe that are not true? That's like if an abusive partner denied everything they did to abuse you and then said, to prove that I've done nothing wrong, I'm going to submit you to everything you just accused me of so that you can see once and for all that I didn't do it. Once we're done, we can move past it like it never happened, because it didn't. This game has 16 collectible tapes you can find strewn throughout the different levels. The first one you can find is during this intro sequence, which I don't believe you can access again unless you wipe your save data, which would really suck if it was the one tape you were missing because you didn't know about the tapes yet. Or injuries associated with testing. Just touch the button to agree, and then we can jump right into some harmless fun that can't harm you at all in any harmful way. But Thank it can harm me in a harmless bear. way? That doesn't make any sense. You acknowledge that Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for accidental digital consciousness transference, real-world manifestations of digital characters, nightmares, night terrors, nights- Whoa, wait, hold on, what? That wasn't in the screen I was reading. There's no way this can fly legally, right? Full disclosure, Help Wanted was the first Five Nights at Freddy's game I ever beat, and this was recorded shortly after I did my video on the core collection. For the most part, I like to go in release order for a series, so I can see how it evolved and I can point out continuity discrepancies, things that may have been handled better in a previous entry in the series, or straight up develop running gags that you guys may appreciate in the linear continuity format. 
I wasn't confident enough in myself to actually play through things like Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night at the time, and I was still on the fence on whether or not I should even consider doing a video on World, but I couldn't find clean playthroughs of any of these games. The only reason I made a video on Security Breach when I did was because it had just come out and I'd heard about all of its issues. The reason I bring this all up is because, wherever possible and reasonable, I like to play games to 100% completion, and I didn't exactly go into Help Wanted blind. I'd seen a bunch of people play it, and did my research on how to find all the secrets and collectibles in the base game. But since that was about three years ago, I don't remember much of this game, and I don't think I would have brought this up back then, but some of these tapes are hidden a little too well to the point that I'm not entirely sure how anybody would have found them, if not by complete accident. I'd never thought about this, but isn't it kind of odd that they're accusing this rogue game developer of making games that are complete fabrications, but they're using his assets like the audio for Phone Guy? I mean, given that according to this game's narrative, that developer probably used names and locations from Fazbear Entertainment without their permission, they're within their legal right to do this, but they recreated everything else. It's just weird that they kept what I assume is the rogue developer's voice in this game, especially when they're planning on suing him. I'm sorry, did I just make a crunch sound effect when I consumed the soda roni? What did I eat the can? Also, soda roni. We went to great lengths to create an authentic VR experience, including using scanned photographs for reference and using original performance routines where applicable. But didn't you just recreate those old games made by the rogue developer? Photographs of what? Original performance routines by whom? I mean, there are some original minigames in this, but I'd hardly call any of the things that happen in them performance routines. Using proprietary technology developed by Fazbear Entertainment, our VR development teams were able to use vintage control boards almost like plug and play, digitally recreating performances and personalities from the past in an instant. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. that's presumably control boards from the animatronics, right? Meaning that their performances and personalities are the ones being directly copied from the past, right? Uh, what parts of those indie games did you think people had an issue with that you needed to clear up? Oh god, it's been years, but I remember fun with Plush Baby being such a pain in the ass. Being completely in the dark and having to flash your light directly on the areas the Plush Babies might show up, but only for a brief moment because your flashlight battery depletes super quickly. As you've probably noticed by now, I play this game in flat mode, but was this any easier in VR? <laughs> what? Why could I eat that? Also, how am I gagging and panting at the same time? It looks like you're making great progress, and more importantly, you're staying in your lane and sticking to the script, which is exactly what our risk assessment team was hoping you'd do. Why would you tell me that? Now I don't want to do that. Looking back at the Funtime Foxy level, I realize that Fun with Plush Baby is the only level in the Darkroom segment not based on anything from the previous games. And for what it's worth, I remember the Funtime Foxy level being a pain in the ass too. There were so many times I was right at the exit and boom, Funtime Foxy was right in front of me. Sparkling Bouillon flavor. No? As someone who actually enjoys sparkling water, the idea of a bubbling water with a fart of chicken broth makes me ooh. Also, that's not how you spell bouillon! It seems that you may have inadvertently accessed an unauthorized portion of the game. Please be aware that interacting with unofficial game code can be harmful to you and potentially damaging to our reputation. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. You left the f***ing code in the game! No offense, but that seems like a you problem. Oh no. It looks like Bonnie's guitar is out of tune and must be recalibrated. Press the blinking button inside Bonnie's secondary throat pipe to enter calibration mode. Something is not right. One of those notes is out of tune. Yeah, no sh the button again You said that when I first got set. here. I wouldn't be doing this otherwise. Oh no. It looks like Chica has picked up some unwanted friends. To clear the infestation, apply the Fazbear Entertainment Restaurant Grade Chemi Spray to Chica's exterior. Press the button under the hanging canister to activate the Chemi Spray. Avoid inhaling the Chemi Spray. 
Exposure to cleaning, disinfecting, and maintenance chemicals may result in respiratory problems, skin, or eye irritation. Well, that would have been nice to know before I pressed the button, you dick! Jump scare incoming, I genuinely don't know what I did to trigger this one. I was going for the fast coin in this level, which requires me to move apart so I can reach it, and when I dropped it, Freddy got me? And I wouldn't even bring this up if not for the fact that I did the exact same thing on a separate attempt and was fine. The only thing I can think of is that maybe the part I dropped hit Freddy's model and so thought that I did a part of this level out of order? Freddy's got a pretty good hold of it. Give it another firm tug. That's what my ex-girlfriend's bi ex-husband Steve said to his long-term, long-distance, low-commitment, casual Latino lover Raul. But they don't wear caps. Huh. Wonder what that was about. Good job. Now place the hat in the lost and found bin on your right. Your, uh... Your lost and found bin looks an awful lot like a garbage bin. No judging, I guess. It's just that I can't imagine someone losing something and having to jump all the way in there just to find it. Good job. It appears there is a child's shoe wedged behind Freddy's music box. Now, why the fuck would that be in there? And are the cap, watch, and shoe all from the same kid or from different kids? Because I gotta tell you, there's no good answer to that question. That concludes your time in parts and service. Your pay will be docked accordingly. Yo, what the fuck? Freddy eats a kid or three, but I'm the one who has to go home with less pay because I dropped your stupid robot's music box? We have dozens of them sitting on the workbench! Oh no. It looks like Foxy's proprietary servo motors are malfunctioning. It is recommended that you keep an eye on Foxy at all times. But Foxy always has an eye on him. Eh? Eh? Get it? Oh, screw you! You try to be funny when talking about the scary robot game. I remember Repair Foxy being kind of annoying too, and I think it's because some of the fuses you would need could get stuck behind others in the drawers. The Fazbear Virtual Experience is a robust title, but it almost never made it to market. The first development team had a lot of problems, made some sloppy mistakes, and was eventually pulled from the project. For that reason, we recommend that you avoid any comments, notes, or warnings that may have been left behind by previous development teams. We assure you that they are wholly untrustworthy. You guys have heard of the Streisand effect, right? Where you unintentionally draw unwanted attention to something by telling others to not look into it? If I didn't know about the tapes before, I certainly do now. We apologize for the claustrophobic accommodations of the secondary service elevator, but the comfort of the main elevator is well above your pay grade. That's classist. Well done. <laughs> oh, oops. I bet that was scary, though. Hey, look, it me. I distinctly remember the Nightmarion level in Night Terrors being frustrating to me because of having to fend off the tentacles bit by bit because if you focus too much on one set, the other would get you. I must have struggled with it for a bit because I remember feeling pretty relieved when I beat it. Would you like to hear a funny fun fact? One of the previous development teams made a hilarious mistake, one that may or may not have resulted in an undesirable anomaly entering the game's code. Please accept that statement as our full legal disclaimer and absolution of responsibility and potential harm to you. Hold on, so you're fully aware that this anomaly exists, but your current dev team did nothing to get rid of it? Or the messages left behind by previous dev teams? I know Fazbear Entertainment likes to... Well, cut corners seems like an understatement, but they were never actively harmful, just grossly negligent. And even that's an understatement. Bitch, you know where I am! I thought Baby was supposed to be one of the smart ones. I knew they were easy to trick, I didn't think you were stupid. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? That can happen? So, I actually don't remember this, but based on the footage, I was really worried that that might have meant that I had to do the Circus Baby level again, but considered that maybe it was a fake out, particularly because of where it happened. And I'm glad that I had the foresight to think, well, there's a chance that the flag for me having completed the minigame is already checked. I'd rather go to the main menu and make sure. If I have it, I can always restart from there, but if I restart here, I'll never know and just waste my time. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is the FNAF game that's adapted the least faithfully in this game, and you want to know why? Because they actually made it fair! So, not only is Phone Guy's audio not playing here, even though I'm pretty sure it should be, apparently his Night 6 audio only plays when you set the Withered level to the Danger difficulty, and... Why? What difference does it make? 
Is that just meant to imply that the danger mode is the intended mode to play on? I was mega confused why I hadn't wound the music box, and it turns out that one of the fast coins only shows up when the puppet is approaching down the hallway, and that's yet another example of how on earth are you supposed to figure that one out? Like, really think of the logic behind that one. I have to let myself lose in order to fully complete this game. Okay, is it really a hallucination if I can see it walking on camera and then into my line of sight? Because that's not a hallucination, that's evidence. So, I don't know if I figured this out or what, but Night 5 of FNAF 3 was somehow the easiest challenge I did by virtue of keeping Springtrap on cam 2. I'm just sitting here in awe at how I can just ignore all the hallucinations and continue to lure him back even when I can hear him in the vents. I guess he wasn't lying, he does always come back. For the blacklight version of Fun with Balloon Boy, the flat mode has a giant red balloon in front of the camera the whole time. I don't think this is as much of a problem in the proper VR mode, because you can probably move your head around to look at the rest of the hallway, but in the version I played, I basically had to do this level blind. Okay, this is a really small thing, and the only reason I'm even bringing it up is because I've seen other people complain about this too, but I really dislike that every time you complete a level, no matter which one, the game sets the menu back at FNAF 1, forcing you to navigate back to whatever level you want to play next. It's especially annoying when you're going in order and just want to play the next level of a section. Holy bananas, the blacklight version of Fun with Plush Baby. I forgot about this. So every gripe I had with the original level is super amplified in this one because all the plushies are replaced with plush babies and you have to find the scrap baby versions, which as you can imagine, blend in a lot. You want to know how I know I did this a metric f ton of times? I'm messing with the camera like I'm just impatient to get to the next plush baby. Trust me, I am not that confident in my gaming abilities like that unless I've done this a sh ton. Bonnie's Parts and Services Blacklight level is kind of lame, because it's literally the same minigame but with a blacklight and music that I guess is meant to distract you? In fact, Freddy's level is kind of the same but in black and white instead of blacklight and static instead of music. I guess it's just kind of disappointing when the other two levels had their mechanics a little altered. Oh no, it looks like the Kimmy spray is no longer effective. To combat the infestation, pick them off by hand if not. Return the cupcake to Chica's plate. Place the cupcake on the plate. Great job. Chica is ready to serve pizza and hugs to the kids again. Uh, but I didn't... I didn't remove all the but. You know what? You talked about my pay grade earlier and things being above it. This is definitely above my pay grade. Oh, no, no, it was this version of the minigame that gave me trouble because the fuses would flash different colors and so I wasn't sure if I was picking the right one. My previous point still stands though. It's annoying that you can't just grab a fuse from a drawer and have to pick up another one first. Congratulations on completing the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience. You did an amazing job. You might be wondering if you missed anything, or if there's anything left to see. So just take my word for it, you didn't miss anything, and there's nothing left to see. We're looking forward to a fresh start with you now that we've all had a good laugh at these tall tales, and now that you realize that Fazbear Entertainment is a safe, family-friendly brand with no skeletons in our closet. Uh, yeah, uh, some of that sh wasn't in any of the other games, uh, particularly this last part that led to your credits. Did, did you just show us how the kid stuck in Freddy's body died? Because we didn't really know the specifics of that. Hello? Can you hear me? Don't exit this room, okay? This isn't a mistake. This room isn't a mistake. I had to hide these logs away from the core gameplay files in a place that only a beta tester would look, and in a place where the files could be protected. I just really, really hope that the next development team finds this before the game is released to the public. This game has some kind of malicious code in it that we haven't been able to fully contain, or even understand for that matter. We're over budget and out of time. But that's not the reason that we're shutting down. Listen. I have to keep this short so the file size will be small enough to fly under the radar. Then shut the f up and just tell me what you need to say. My god, with this I don't have a lot of time so I'm going to waste time by telling you that I don't have a lot of time cliche. Have you ever heard of a guillotine paper slicer? It sounds made up, but it's an actual piece of office equipment. I didn't even know we had one in the supply room. I guess the more common at businesses that do a lot of graphic design work. Who the f 
Who cares about this? You said you wanted to keep it short, but here you are, starting with a question you'll never hear me answer, following it up by explaining it anyway, making the question even more pointless, with an assertion which I'm positive is incorrect because I'm sure most people learn what a paper slicer is by the time they're 10 years old, followed of course by the fact that you didn't know your office had one and what profession most commonly would use a paper cutter. Again, something a 10 year old could tell you. And then, most egregious of all, you waste time telling us you remember seeing one at school, possibly as a 10 year old, and remembering how dangerous it looked and how afraid you were of losing a finger, not before reminiscing about how silly that was to think about now. That's when you finally get to the goddamn point and tell us that Jeremy did design work, explaining how he might have known that you guys had a paper cutter in the office. And I'm sorry I'm so incredibly pedantic about this, but you said yourself you wanted to keep it short and had to give us these tapes in as small a quantity as possible so that the file size didn't seem suspicious to your clients and spend most of this tape talking nonsense when you could have summed it up in a single sentence. Jeremy found a paper cutter. That is all the information we needed. But then, he started appearing. At least that's what Jeremy said. Thanks, Jeremy, for playing the pronoun game, but especially thanks to you, QA tester, for quoting him instead of being straightforward in your goddamn emergency tapes! The supply room was lit. I didn't even notice Jeremy standing in the testing room as I walked past. The supply room was so bright, glowing from all the way down the hall. No one cares what the supply room looked like! You wouldn't have needed 16 f***ing tapes if you had just gotten to the point of what you're trying to expose before the game goes gold! You can always tell when a company is getting ready to fire someone. Okay, so please don't explain it. Oh my god! Why are you explaining the signs of getting fired if you think a beta tester is going to find this? They know what the signs are! You said it yourself! They lied to us. They lied to all of us. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer who supposedly made up a bunch of crazy stories that tarnished the brand. But that's not true at all. In their haste to develop this VR game and clear their name, they sent us some things I don't think they intended us to see, such as a hard drive containing emails between Fazbear Entertainment and a certain indie developer. Fazbear Entertainment hired the game developer. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. A campaign to discredit everything. To discredit something they hired someone to do? I know Fazbear Entertainment is shameless, but I didn't think they were stupid. If the point was to make light of what happened, why weren't they just upfront about it like they are in this game? Better yet, why make light of children being murdered at your establishment at all? Who was the galaxy-brained 40 chess 10 billion IQ genius who thought, oh, we're being accused of covering up pedicide. Let's not only deny the allegations, but make video games depicting the alleged crimes. Wouldn't that be hilarious? I ran a fragmentation program on the area of memory that was storing these logs for you. I effectively broke the files into pieces and broke the anomaly along with it. That means that you won't have my warnings to guide you, but hopefully it also means that this anomaly, this virus, or whatever it is, will remain broken and unable to do more damage. Okay, this tape doesn't really make sense because the QA tester is only now fragmenting the data, which is either why they were strewn throughout the levels or why they were split into separate tapes. But why is that not how this was done in the first place? Not only would that have possibly prevented Glitchtrap from doing what he did, attaching his code to the logs, which to be fair, you couldn't have known about when you programmed this place, but condensing all this data into a level that you're trying to hide from your client just makes it easier for the client to find. There is a way to kill it. It wants to escape. To escape through someone. Someone plugged into this game. That's you now. You have to let it begin the process of leaving through you. Then use the disconnect switch that I've embedded by the main stage. Let it approach you. Let it begin to merge with you. Play the music and flip the switch. That will cause a hard restart of the game and flush the memory, effectively killing it. I hope. You hope. And you came to this conclusion how? And you didn't try this yourself, why? 
Corn maze is one of the hardest things I've had to do in this entire series. Like, seriously, I spent hours on it. It's one of the parts of this game that I remember the most vividly simply because of how much time I spent trying to complete it. Normally, all you would need to beat this is one of the four colored keys and make it to the corresponding exit, usually on the opposite side of the map, and the challenge comes from avoiding Grim Foxy while doing so. I would imagine that's challenging enough. I'd say I would imagine because there's a secret ending in this level that requires collecting all four keys, red, yellow, green, and blue, ignoring the exits, avoiding Grim Foxy, and returning to an area of the map that chimes once you have all four keys in order to collect a fifth glitchy purple key that unlocks the padlock to the cellar near where you first spawn in the level at the center of the map. Now, remember, this is a maze, so it's not as straightforward as getting one key and immediately going for the next one. But that's not just because of the maze aspect. No, see, there's a crucial thing I haven't mentioned yet, and it's that all the keys spawn in random set locations. The location of one of the keys you find on your current attempt may be wildly different than the one on your next attempt. And it's bad enough that this place is already tricky to navigate, but when you have a fiery ghost robot fox on your ass charging at you the second he sees you, and the only way to avoid him is if you happen to be near a cardboard cutout you can hide behind if you're fast enough, and if he catches you, you have to start the level all over again, this time with the keys being in completely different spots than they just were, well, you can imagine why that would be difficult! Also, if I had a nickel for every indie horror game that had you navigating a corn maze while being stalked by something that shouldn't be sentient in order to complete a task so that I can escape said corn maze that I played in 2020, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but uh, the joke is Artie's Maze. Go play Artie's Maze. Let's see how you did. Oh no, it looks like there aren't enough components. Perhaps the instructions were not clear. Yeah, no, that's definitely what the problem was. Maybe it's just me, I'm willing to accept that, but this level isn't explained very well. I was putting things into the bin as they were showing on screen, which was kind of tough because sometimes I'd have a part ready to deposit and then the screens would change and the game doesn't tell you that you can still deposit those parts anyway. But when the parts I had were on screen, I'd get the green confirmation screen and somehow I still did it wrong? Well done. Let's see how you did. Piece of cake. What? How does that look any better than the- Whatever, you know what, whatever. I had enough parts, I guess that's all that matters. I have no idea how goddamn high my luck stat was when I play Trick or Tree, because at no point are you ever told that when Mangle shows up, you're supposed to wear his mask to get her to go away, and because I couldn't see into that side of the house, I had to take a random guess as to which of the other animatronics was gonna answer the door, because all of them except for Freddy were on that side. I don't know if it's a bug or what, but I didn't have subtitles show up during the Dreadbear minigame. It's time to introduce the creature to the kids for focus testing and troubleshooting. Yeah, somehow I doubt that's going to be the sound they'll be making when they see this thing. So, I almost thought this thread was loose because Vanny ended up being something very unrelated to this in the base version of Security Breach, but I looked it up and apparently this was kind of resolved in the Ruin DLC and further expanded upon in Help Wanted 2. Or maybe this is just the mask Vanny wears in Security Breach? I don't know, man. When you make the antagonist of the next game you developed a person who wears a bunny mask very similar to this one, but never really mention the events of this game in any way, not to mention the multiple different endings the base game has, you can't blame me for thinking this whole plot point never went anywhere. It's just weird to me that your DLC might not have been teasing your next game, but the DLC to your next game. Hey everyone, Charai5 here. Thank you so much for watching my CinemaSins pastiche of everything wrong with Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. Uh, this was my favorite FNAF game for a while, I think, not only because it was the first one that I could beat, but because it was a compilation of all the games that led up to it, and a sort of a celebration of the FNAF series as a whole. Uh, which I guess leads me to the question of the video, do you guys have a favorite memory of this game? Uh, I know that I said that I don't remember this game much, and that's kind of true, but I do remember vividly how I felt when I played this game. Uh, because even though some of the challenges took me a long-ass time, the game still felt like it was a huge chunk of my life for a while there, and I think part of it is, you know, all the research I did uh, to make sure that I knew how to complete the game, and that's true for almost any Everything Wrong With that I do, but for some reason, I just remember this one the most. I, I, I couldn't tell you why. Maybe it was because it's the one that I've had on the shelf for the longest time, just sitting there waiting to be made into a video. Uh, maybe it's because it was one of the many times that I went down the FNAF lore rabbit hole and that, that passion got reawoken inside of me. I, I really don't know. I couldn't really tell you. But 
you know, thank you to CinemaSins for, you know, doing everything they do, inspiring the series. Go check out their sister channels that cover music videos, brands, and other topics. Uh, thank you to all the wonderful patrons and members whose names you're seeing on screen right now. If you want to be part of them, you can go down to the link in the description, check out the Patreon, or you can hit the join button underneath this video. Any little bit helps, any, you know, watching, commenting, sharing, uh, if you have a group of people who enjoy Five Nights at Freddy's, especially with Help Wanted 2 that just came out, and you want to show them, like, hey, this is kind of funny, that helps, too. <laughs> Why do I always ramble when I do these? Anyway, thank you guys so much. I love you all. Love you so much. I will see you guys next time. Stay safe. Stay awesome. This is Jarrah 5 signing off. Okay. That's done. Hey, I have a question. Yes? With everything going on, what's our backup plan? Nope. Oh, come on. Nope. We gotta think about it. Yeah? How'd that work out last time? I don't know if you remember this, but this wasn't our first choice. It wasn't our second choice either. <laughs> it wasn't even on a list of conceivable options. Just like me, sort of just became a thing. So if, if everything just burned up tomorrow. <sighs> Listen, you know as well as I do that life didn't happen the way we wanted it to. In large part because of you but now we have skills that we didn't even know we were developing when we were just doing this for fun. If it ever comes to it, we'll be fine.